wow, red alert, big news, either very good or very bad. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but the headline is, oh, Ronnie D, Ron DeSanctimonious, as the former president likes to call him, Ron DeSantis, as um, most of the world would know him, will be announcing on Wednesday that he's running for president. He's not going to do the standard thing, um, you know, like old Yeb Bush or even Donald Trump um, in, you know, going and having some live event, making a speech and, you know, giving this 20 minute speech about, you know, the state of America and how we're really down. And you know what? But we, we can come back because America can be good and and or, or it can even be great. You know, if you ask Mr. Trump, um, his, of course, famous slogan from his speech, make America great again. But they all have, you know, the same overall message. The country's down. Things we're in bad times. But you know what? If you vote for me, we can have good times again. And then at the end, they say, that's why I'm running for president. That is the script to a T. The content changes. The issues of the day change. You know, when President Trump uh, gave his announcement speech, it was all about immigration. For the mo Well, not all about immigration. It was about a lot of stuff. He talked about um, uh, NAFTA and stuff like that. But his, the main highlight was immigration, which is still a big issue right now, obviously. But every presidential candidate does. And when uh, Biden announced his candidacy, he said it was all about white supremacy. America's in bad shape because we got all this white supremacy everywhere. And you vote for me and I'll end racism. That was what Biden ran on. And as we can all see, he's followed through on that promise and he's ended racism. But DeSantis does not appear to be taking that path in the announcement of his campaign. He's going to, did I even say it yet, by the way? No, I didn't. Oh my gosh. I don't think I said DeSantis is going to announce that he's running for president on a Twitter spaces with Elon Musk. Now, this is a very, very interesting um, but strange decision. Uh, I don't think a lot of people will hear it directly. I think it might be carried you know, by the news channels and things and might be live on some YouTube feeds mirrored and stuff like that. But I don't think a lot of people listen to Twitter spaces. I find it. I find them kind of out of the way. Um, and they're kind of awkward. You can't really, you know, when they're live, I just, I don't like to listen to things live unless I can back it up to the beginning. And, and so, I mean, I think that Twitter spaces are a little clunky. Obviously, I'm going to listen to this one, um, but it's a, it seems like kind of a limiting medium. But the fact that he's doing it uh, alongside Elon Musk um, is going to gather a lot more eyeballs, I think, than just going to, um, uh, you know, some uh, convention hall, a banquet hall in Miami, uh, like, you know, I, you would expect from, you know, Florida presidential candidate, or I guess in his case, he'd probably do Jacksonville, uh, since he's from that part of the state. Give a speech in front of a waving crowd that has a bunch of signs with your name written on it. Hell, Bobby Kennedy just did this, a, you know, a couple weeks ago. He did the standard thing, and he gave a great speech. Um, I think I reviewed it on this channel. And so that format is not necessarily broken. It's not it's not a useless format, but this is a completely different idea. And if this is this could just be a one off, this could just be a flash in the pan, but it might be indicative of um, fresh ideas in terms of how you run a presidential campaign. Now, everyone involved here, I think, has a great incentive to go ahead with this uh, with this arrangement. Um, I think that uh, for, well, let's put it, I'll start with DeSantis. For DeSantis to be on the same stage, though not literally, I mean, it'll be digitally, um, with Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, who has gained a lot of cachet on the right, even though until, until last year, I guess, everyone would have considered him to be on the left. Um, and he still is, if you look at like 2015 standards, I mean, you go back to 2015, Elon Musk, who he is today, he would be solidly within the Democratic coalition. Um, today, he's not. That doesn't necessarily, um, um, and the fact that, or I should say, the fact that he is uh, appears to be on board with DeSantis 2024, I, I don't think would naturally bode well for a Republican presidential candidate that you have a, you know, a liberal billionaire endorsing you. Um, not that. He's made an official endorsement, but how much more 
can you do than have a guy on your platform? You give him um, a prime, uh, a prime uh, soapbox to preach from, and then you personally interview him. You know, you have a conversation with him. You ask all the questions. Um, that to me seems like Elon Musk is probably. Uh, going to support Ron DeSantis ultimately, even if he says, you know, tomorrow, oh, well, my mind's not made up, you know, I'm open-minded, you know, I want to get to know you better. That's, these are probably things we'll hear out of Elon Musk tomorrow during the Twitter spaces. And so this is going to get DeSantis a lot more exposure than he otherwise would have, because nationally, he's still not a huge figure, not compared to Donald Trump. He does not have anywhere near the name ID of Donald Trump. Everyone, even before he ran for president, knew who Donald Trump was. DeSantis is the governor of the third, yeah, third largest state in America. So that's a big deal. But still, if you live in, you know, Montana or uh, Minnesota or of uh, New Hampshire, what Ron DeSantis does, it, it does not directly impact you. Even if, uh, you know, during 2020, you know, people like me in Florida touted him and said, hey, you know, what we're doing in Florida is great. Uh, hopefully more Republican governors will follow. And I do think that he was influential. Um, I'm not I don't like to I'm not rewriting history like uh, um, a lot of the um, real staunch Trump supporters who say that, oh, you know, DeSantis, he actually was very pro lockdown. You know, I'm not going to play that game. I was here. I experienced uh, what we went through. Did every decision that DeSantis made, was it always perfect? No. Did he go along with the um, uh, the insanity at first? Yes. Yes, he did. But he was one of the first to snap out of it. And <clears throat> I personally, when I was watching him on TV make these announcements, I want to get off too bad on a tangent, when he was talking about you know the lockdown stuff at first, to me, he sounded very, very reluctant. Um, and he did not immediately jump to it. it. So it was not his instinct. He went along with the crowd for like a month, and then he said, okay, enough of that. Which is more than I can say for almost uh, almost any other Republican governor. But I've gotten way off topic. The point was to say that Ron DeSantis is not a national figure. He is not someone who is particularly well-known around the country. Appearing on the same stage with Elon Musk, Elon Musk taking interest in him, um, that is going to elevate his position. That's going to elevate him as a person. This is a massive opportunity for him. If he can come across as natural, if he can come across as um, a genuine person, which I think Elon does very well. Elon does very well in interviews. He, he's, a, you know, I mean, he stutters a little bit, but it doesn't, he doesn't sound scripted. He sounds like he's just speaking his mind. And I think if DeSantis can pull that off, which I think recently he's been having trouble with, um, coming you know coming across naturally um, and, and not in an awkward way, then this is going to um, seriously boost his profile and it's going to be a big springboard, much more so than a traditional campaign announcement. I think that if Bobby Kennedy Jr. could have had the same opportunity um, when he ran for uh, you know announced he was running against Joe Biden. I, th I would say the same things about him. You know, this is a huge opportunity for Bobby Kennedy Jr. to elevate his profile. And honestly, I, I almost feel like Bobby Kennedy Jr. would be more up um, Elon Musk's alley, considering that Elon Musk is someone who comes from the Democratic Party to begin with, and Bobby Kennedy Jr. is running as like, hey, I'm a 90s Democrat. Who knows, maybe he could give this same opportunity of a Twitter Spaces um, to RFK in the future. I think it would be um, interesting and probably advantageous for Elon Musk, which I haven't even gotten to his role in all this yet, um, you know, his, what he has to gain. Um, I think that he could um, start a series uh, where he, he could call it the Twitter Presidential Forum or something like that, where Elon has on a presidential candidate um, you know, a serious one, not a, not to be, not to be mean, but not a Marianne Williamson. Um, you know, a serious person, not a Tim Scott. You know, the major four, the 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 top four people in the polling, the top two on each side. That would be Trump and DeSantis on the Republican side, Biden and Kennedy on the Democrat side, 
and he could speak to each one of them one on one if they want to, and ask them you know similar questions, just get to know them. And this would not only be a great opportunity for the candidates, this would be a great opportunity for Elon Musk to make Twitter more relevant, to draw people to Twitter, to make news on Twitter. That's what I think is in um, in this for Elon Musk. People are going to have to come to Twitter now to hear Ron DeSantis announce his presidential campaign. And in the future, if he has other candidates on, they will have to come there to hear uh, what will probably be, you know, if, and I think Elon can pull this off, what will probably be one of the more substantive interviews with presidential candidates um, that you will get this cycle. Because most interviews you get with presidential candidates, they're you know they're they're either softballs or they're gotchas. It's either you know you've got CNN who wants to get Trump, and they just keep asking Trump a bunch of gotchas and saying, you know, Mr. Trump, is it not true that you're a rapist? And then Mr. Trump would say, No, I'm not a rapist. It was a, it was a perfect hiccup. Oh, hiccup. It was a perfect hookup. The lady was very pleased. I think she was much more satisfied with my performance than I was with hers, frankly. That's what you get out of a CNN town hall. Um, and then you have Biden on a CNN town hall. And, you know, and they say, uh, uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, 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 corn pop brush in my legs. And so you get nothing of substance out of that. There's no reason to watch other than pure entertainment, you know, in the case of Trump batting around CNN. Uh, then, you know, you have Trump on Fox, and you, I don't know, who who, would, who do they even have to interview Trump anymore? I mean, they don't have Tucker. Or they put him on there with Hannity, and Hannity goes, Mr. Trump, is it not true that Joe Biden is destroying America by empowering far-left Democrats and, uh, and the New Green Deal? And Trump would come back and say, uh, why, yes, Sean, far-left Democrats, very bad. Um, no Green Deal here. No, no, no. Socialism sucks. We've heard all that a million times. We don't need to hear that anymore. Um, and so I'll be interested to hear what Elon Musk has to say to DeSantis. Uh, I think that I will either love it or hate it. I don't think that it, I don't think it'll be boring. I don't think it'll be lukewarm. I think either um, it, Elon will frustrate me, um, or just you know DeSantis could be the one frustrating me. Although I don't, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of emotion. I never have felt emotional towards him. Uh, I mean, even back in 2018 when he was running for governor and the alternative was Andrew Gillum, um, I just uh, – I, I was not emotionally invested. I don't get emotionally invested in presidential candidates uh, or any political candidate really. Oh, and so I'll be interested to see how the format works because this is not a – it's not just Elon interviewing DeSantis. Apparently it's, it's a conversation between Musk and DeSantis moderated by David Sachs. Uh, which, for those of you who don't know David Sachs, um, I kind of like him. I mean, uh, you know, but he's here's the thing. I think David Sachs is a real person because, you know, sometimes he says things that I, you know, wholeheartedly agree with. Sometimes he says things that I disagree with. And the guy's got enough money. He's, you know, he's not mentioning his words. When he comes out and writes an op-ed, he's not doing it to get paid. The guy's got plenty of money. He makes money. He makes his money in finance. He's not making his money by writing op-eds. So... When I read what David Sachs has to say, I at least know I'm getting a real opinion from a, you know, accomplished individual. So sometimes I read David Sachs and I go, that's stupid. Other times I go, very interesting point. Sometimes I read an interesting point of his that I disagree with. You know, it could be both. I can think he's both wrong and still have an interesting perspective. So right, I'll, I'll be interested to see what David Sachs's role um, in the event will be. And, you know, I think that this would work a lot better, though, if it was a, a live stream like Periscope instead of a Twitter Spaces. I just, I don't know. I'm not sure what the whole point of Twitter Spaces is first. I just haven't figured it out. So, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.